Here's a quick video that shows you how to blink the internal LED of the ESP32 microcontroller. As the name suggests, the internal LED is built into the ESP32's board itself, so this tutorial requires no breadboard, wires or any other LEDs. The first thing you need to do is to connect your ESP32 to your computer using a USB cable. Incidentally, if you can't connect your computer to the cable, then check the description below because I have another video about troubleshooting the incredibly common cable issues with the ESP32. Now let's look at the code side of things. So in the Arduino IDE, the first thing to do is to make sure that you have the right board selected. So go to Tools and then Board and check that it is on an ESP32. I tend to use the ESP32 dev module board. This works very well with this particular ESP32, which is a AZ delivery one from Amazon. So when you connect the ESP32 to the computer, you should hear this noise. This is a good sign that you've actually got a good cable. Once it's connected, you can also go to tools and then port and check that you've got the right serial port. Here I'm using COM8. You can also click here on get board info. It says unknown board here, but if you get some information here, then it's often a good sign that your cable is working. So we're now ready to write some code. Let's write the code to blink the LED. So here is our basic code for blinking the internal LED on the ESP32. So at the top we define a constant internal underscore LED and we set it to 2. This is the pin 2 of the ESP32. Incidentally, if you're using an Arduino instead, then change this to pin 13, which is the internal LED on the Arduino Uno. So in the setup routine, we set pin mode of the internal LED as output. Then we have a loop. We do digital write, so we write some voltage to the internal LED and set it to high. That means that the LED will switch on. Then we have a delay of a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. Then we turn the LED off again. There's another delay of a second and then it will go back to the start and turn the LED on again. This should hopefully give the appearance of the LED blinking on and off for one second. So now let's upload our sketch. So we go to sketch and then upload. And I'll just note that it's a good idea to hold down the boot button on the ESP32 while you're uploading. Certainly do this if the serial port doesn't appear to be connecting. So I recommend that you stop holding the boot button down when you see the writing app messages appear as it's uploading the sketch. So as you can see, I have uploaded the sketch, but the LED is not actually blinking. So what's going wrong? So here is a near identical sketch. The only thing I've done is to use the serial port and print a line of information when the LED is switched off and switched on again. So let's upload this sketch and see if this works. Again, I'll hold down the boot button while it's uploading this sketch. So as you can see, this sketch does actually work. The LED is blinking at one second intervals. If we go to Tools and then Serial Monitor, make sure it's on 9600 board as it is in our code. So you can see that the LED on and off message is displaying. So it is very weird that this code is working, but the previous code to switch on and off the LED isn't working. You'll notice that there is something else strange about this code here. I have actually set the internal LED to pin 12, whereas it should be pin 2. But as you can see, I can change it to anything, but it will still work. So as you can see, even with a pin of 99, it is still blinking the internal LED. For this reason, I don't know if blinking the internal LED is actually a very good test of the ESP32. For this reason, if you want to test your ESP32, I recommend using the Hall Sensor example. So to find this, you go to File, Examples, scroll down to ESP32, and Hall Sensor here. So I've uploaded this Hall Sensor sketch, and if we go to Tools and then Serial Monitor, we can see a fast scrolling list of numbers here. And the numbers don't matter much, but if you've actually got a magnet and you wave it over the ESP32, the numbers are meant to change. At this speed though, it's kind of hard to read the numbers. The good thing about the Hall sensor is that it's another way of testing if your ESP32 will actually connect to your computer and upload sketches. It also requires no external components, so it's a really easy one to do. 
Incidentally, when you are uploading sketches to the ESP32, it's a good idea to close the serial monitor window. Sometimes it won't let you upload a new sketch if this window is open. I'll try one more thing. I can actually change the delay here, so let's have it a tenth of a second. So now the LED should blink one tenth of a second. I'll just upload this sketch just to show that this code is actually controlling the LED. So now the LED is blinking much more rapidly, so our code is actually working. Another weird thing I've noticed is that the internal LED only appears to blink. You can't actually turn it on for a period or turn it off for a period. Once again, I'll show the serial monitor. So if you do know why I'm getting these weird problems with my particular ESP32, then do drop a comment below. Let me know if you experience any weird issues with your own particular ESP32 as well. Finally, the source code for my sketches is in the description below if you want to copy and paste it into your Arduino IDE. Thanks for watching!